Hey friends, it's Brittany Valadez here for BravelyDaily.com. Well, Great American Pure Flakes has a new show called Country Rescue, and I got a chance to check out the show. Oh my gosh, you guys are going to hear me singing his praises throughout this interview and talk with some of the three, well, I would say the three main stars of this show. Make sure to watch Great American Pure Flakes' new show, Country Rescue. Oh yeah, you can follow me on social media. I will put all that in the description box below. Okay, let's get into this interview. Julia. Tell us a little bit about yourself and about your role in the new uh, Pure Flix, Great American Pure Flix show, um, Country Rescue. I love that you play an EMT and you know what? I'm just not going to talk anymore. Take it away. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, thank you so much for having us. Um, yeah, I, I auditioned for this show like any normal audition that came in and Riley and I actually have been good friends for a while. He's one of my besties. And so we would read with each other on all our auditions and, uh, we just happened to book this show together and then uh, getting the experience to be on the set was just such a such a dream come true. I mean, Danny and I are at very similar places in our lives. You know, we're in our 20s trying to figure out what life looks like, like what is our purpose? And and along the way, you know, you're, you're meeting lots of new people. And um, it was it was really fun to to dive into that with all of our similarities and differences. Oh, so Riley, this is cool. Now, you guys, are obviously, from what she just said, you're friends before you guys got the show, and then now you're playing on this show together. And can you tell us a little bit about um, your role in the show? Because there's kind of a competition-ish between you guys. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, so I play Tim, who is another EMT hopeful at the CMT unit trying to get a job. Uh, the thing with my character is that his mom is not in the best condition health wise. So he wants to get this job so he can take care of her. But uh, I think amongst that competition, he is in for this job. He also finds himself maybe in a little bit of a competition with Griffin for Danny's attention. And um, I think that at the end of the day, Tim's story more so revolves around the fact that he is a bit of a people pleaser and he needs to learn to do things for himself so he can actually better help the people that he saves as an EMT on a regular basis. Man, that's actually um, really cool to think about. I didn't think about that, what you said about being a people pleaser. You're right, when we're people pleasers, um, sometimes we can lose sight of what we need to do because we wanna make sure that this is okay and this is okay. And instead of what, okay, this needs to be done instead of making this person or this person happy. So I was like, I didn't think about that. Um, okay, so Keller, can you tell us about your role? And I know it's almost like, I don't want to give it away, but it seems that there could be, you said, competition, maybe a little love triangle. As we're doing this interview, it's Valentine's Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's definitely a competition triangle, a little bit of a love triangle. You know, we're all competing for one open slot at this one EMT station. And, uh, and Julia and Riley's characters, they know exactly why they're there. They have their motivations. And then Griffin, my character, he just kind of bursts onto the scene uh cocky confident kind of happy-go-lucky and uh and we find out that he's the fire chief's son and the fire chief and the emt chief go way way back so griffin thinks he's got a foot in the door he thinks he's already got the job and he can just kind of show up late and do whatever he wants but um we then find out that he's struggling with a little bit more than than what we see right on the surface and uh and, you know, he's also in his 20s and trying to figure out what life is. And he's got the pressures from his dad and uh, and trying to get this job and, and figure out what he's going to do with his life. So, um, yeah, there's there's this these multiple triangles going on and uh, character story arcs. And just it's a lot going on. You know, I think that that's really good. Like you said, not everybody is as, as you know, we see them. People definitely put on a persona in real life and then you get to know them a little bit more and you get to see, wait, you're hurting, you're struggling with this, you have this insecurity. So I like that that show is not just about um, what you guys are doing as careers like in EMT, but obviously the character, y'all's characters and the backstories of them. And then I'm sure as the show goes on, we'll get to know a little bit more about y'all because it's very entertaining to see the contrast um, in y'all's characters. Um, okay, so obviously it deals with EMT. I'm gonna ask the question and any one of y'all can answer. Any sort of training y'all had to go through? What was it like? Did you just know? Did you Google? Tell me about that. You know, I very much had the thing of, I stayed up agonizing over trying to learn as much as I could about being an EMT so I could be prepared and know what I was talking about. And then we ended up working with EMTs on set. So 
all of that stress was for nothing. But um, <laughs> it was it was cool working with them on set because like, even though we were still getting help from them at their unit, you know, they were still on the job, still going to do their thing. And so even just kind of seeing like, maybe what headspace they were in, what they were kind of trying to, where they were trying to keep themselves at was honestly, that might have even been just as helpful, if not more than the actual like, EMT work that we had to learn for some of the rescue sequences we have in the show. I just remember thinking, and I was watching that and I, looking at the stories, uh, you know, you kind of start feeling for the people who are being rescued. And I don't want to go into something that I thought was funny, but I'm like, oh, I just don't want to give it away. But I'm like, people, you need to watch it. It's a really good show. I really, I really enjoyed it. Um, and I, I like, I love obviously the faith element to that. I love the fact that it's very like talking about God and, and, and I know um, like the characters in there, just seeing them be vulnerable about, about that. And I remember listening to the show and I said, okay, I'm not only being entertained, but I'm learning myself. So if any of y'all can want to talk about your, either your own personal faith or your character's faith in the show and to give a, viewers a little insight, take it away. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll jump into that one. Um, I, yeah, I'm a, I'm a person of faith. And so getting you know the privilege to be a part of a show that is a faith-based show is is really such a blessing especially because you know as an actor you're presented with so many different types of projects like do i want to say yes to that do i want to say no to that so to be in a space where you know it's just it's just kind of freeing the fact that we know we're going into it and just sharing good heartwarming uplifting stories and um sharing god with people too is is really incredible and, and it's a huge part of my character danny's storyline is is her questioning her faith and, and looking more closely at her relationship with god and her purpose on earth absolutely i noticed i i, I love that element because it just like i said before it made me think like not only am I watching a show to be entertained and I'm, you know, loving the things that make me laugh and then the things that I'm like, oh man, I remember, you know, losing a family member or something like that or being faced with this, this decision. And then also seeing the character, um, like your character's aspect of faith. And then I like the fact that you have almost a sort of the mentor, like a discipleship older woman that works there. I think that was like, that's so cool. I really enjoyed it. Now, you guys, um, can y'all tell me about what it was like when you obviously got the news that, number one, your cast, but also number two, that Great American Pure Flix picked it up. Tell me about that. I'll go. Um, I was <laughs> I was so excited to get cast. Um, there's so many reasons. This is a short interview, but we can go down the list. But uh, shooting in Nashville was great and uh, and getting to team up. I think the, the the best part about getting cast in this was in tandem with who else got cast in this, not just Julia and Riley, like the entire team. We had this uh, wardrobe room that was like our our holding space when we weren't shooting scenes. And uh, and we all just really got to know each other in that room and, and created these extremely strong and, and close friendships and relationships that I think show in in on screen um, because we knew each other so well and spent so much time with each other and um, that was by far my favorite part of getting cast in this and like, yeah it was fun prepping and having a, a a bigger role to really dig into but uh, the experience of the whole thing is something that I will remember forever certainly I think you have a fun role too um, I'm not an actress but if I ever was I find it fun to kind of play. I didn't want to say the bad guy, but the bad guy was the bad story. Like, I mean, a good story behind him. But it's kind of fun to be a little bit mean because you're like, hey, if I'm not like that in real life, I can play one on screen and everyone around me knows I'm I'm not serious. So <laughs> that's true. And I actually haven't gotten the opportunity to do a lot of family friendly things, uh, projects, and I'm the bad guy a lot. And I was able to sit with my entire family and watch this. And like you said, still get to play a little bit of the bad guy and still get to play a little bit of a jerk sometimes. Um, and uh, and it was just such a fun challenge to 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 do that. And then, you know, uh, at times we might root for Griffin. So then you have to show his his uh, his softer side. And, and yeah, it was it was it was just all around. So great. Oh, I love that. And then I think. My, I could be wrong. Are y'all like the first original show on Great American Pure Flix? I know they're having movies that are coming out, but I don't know shows. I'm sure. 
We are. Yeah, yeah. So we are the first original series on the great American Family Network. So that's, we're super excited. Yeah. Yeah. And you can watch us also on Great American Pure Flix on February 23rd on streaming. And then you can catch us, I think it's Mondays, uh, Monday nights on Great American Family. So uh, we're very excited and we're very uh, blessed to be, you know, to be given that position to be the first show. That's kind of crazy. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. No, that's huge. I mean, it's like y'all can say, no, this network is new. Like we're inaugural and we were the first series on the network. So congratulations, you guys. That's a really, really big deal. I'm, I'm so excited for everyone to check it out. And um, I know that we're going to have to wrap up this interview. So I just want to say thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I really want to encourage anybody else watching this, watch the show. Like I said, I've already seen it. I'm asking for more episodes. It's really good. You guys did a great job. Friends, I was so excited to hear about this new series um, on Great American Pure Flakes and Great American Family. I think it's really cool what Bill Abbott did. If you guys know the backstory, um, he used to be over at Hallmark. He left Hallmark and he started his own network to put out content that was that's family values because there was a lot of maybe not so biblical content going on at Hollywood in, in, in at Hallmark. So he's like, wait, I'm going to leave that behind and I'm going to start something new, which I want to encourage any of y'all friends. A lot of times we can see what's wrong with the world and we should. It, that's what the Bible calls us to do, not to be like the world, but you know, we want to understand it. So we do the opposite. And obviously if you want to know what the opposite is, you read the word, but then instead of complaining or pointing out what's wrong with it, let's create something new. So I have a question for you guys. What is something in your life where you see is a problem that's not following the word of God at all? But you're thinking, okay, I see this problem. Now, what are you going to do about it? Have you done something about it? Let me know in the comment section below. I know Bill Abbott saw, you know, the same gender thing going on at Hallmark. So he said, wait, I want to put forth family values. And that's why he, he created Great American, uh, Great American Family that's now partnered with Great American, with Pure Flix. So Great American Pure Flix. All right. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Um, if you guys haven't had a chance, make sure you follow me on social media at Brittany Valadez. I'll put all that in the description box below. And of course, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Leave a comment in the comment section. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with all your friends. Until next time, I'm Brittany Valadez for BravelyDaily.com. God bless and I'll see you in the next one.